Friday the 13th. In 1958, two camp counselors are killed at Crystal Lake. Mainly because that's somewhat similar to how Halloween opened and that movie had made money two years prior. Twenty-two years later, the camp is reopening. And we meet several of the new counselors, basically made up of guys who take their shirt off at some point in the movie, even though the costume people made them look quite silly, putting handkerchiefs and suspenders on them. Suspenders have never been cool. They just haven't. And young women who, most of whom, were willing to take many or all of their clothes off. Oh, and one of the girls kind of looks like a dude. Just saying. Something appears to be stalking them at the camp. And that's all I'm going to tell you of the plot. It's impossible to ignore the similarities to Halloween. I already brought it up, but... The... They're being stalked by a POV. In Halloween, the POV was really only used in the opening sequence, and after that, we do see the shape. We just don't see that much of him for a while. We see him at a distance, or we see an arm or a leg. Here, it's basically just people being chased by a camera. The in, in the opening, the music used is really similar to the Psycho theme, further adding to the lack of originality. And it's impossible to claim that this is very this is well done from a technical standpoint, but it's not that bad. It's argued as the first real slasher. I can see why one might not really call Halloween a slasher. And, you know, obviously there have been better ones since it. I think. Okay, there, there have been a lot of fun ones, at least. But, really, it's just the first and it gets the job done, you know. We have young people of both genders in, you know, situations where they can't be helped. You know, you find yourself saying, no, don't go in there, he's right around the corner, and, you know, stuff like that. The deaths aren't bad, there's really only oof, two or three, maybe memorable deaths. It's also noteworthy how little gore there actually is. It's apparently kind of a combination of the MPAA and the fact that they really didn't want to just have a lot of gore. There is a lot of build-up and it's not great, but it works, and at least they made the effort. Right from the beginning, we get kind of hints that something is amiss at Camp Crystal Lake. You know, some of the counselors are gradually finding out something might have happened here. I guess the owners did not put note that people have been killed here in the job ad. And all things considered, that was probably a wise thing to do, although since people do end up dead, maybe not. The music is iconic today. It's one of the only iconic things to already be here 
in this first movie. Most of the iconic imagery evidently comes from the sequels. But with the, the infamous that apparently some people thought was cha-cha-cha, I guess that's the whole dance of death thing, I don't know. It works, and I'm not even going to tell you what it's about, because everybody already knows that. I've only now watched this film, and I've known for years what those syllables were supposed to signify. This isn't f filmed or edited all that well. From a technical standpoint, really the only good thing is the gore effects. And they don't really hold up today, but they were good for the time. And they did sometimes get a bit creative with them, and that's part of the... Part of what we expect from a slasher flick, you know, creative deaths. The twist at the end. Well, there are there are there's more than one. At least one of them is pretty obvious. You're going to know it even if you haven't heard anything about this film before. You're going to know it right away. The characters aren't really likable, but it was, you know, the, on the commentary track, I think it's Seanus Cunningham, the director and producer, talks about that, you know, it might be depressing if we, you know, meet people who really get to like them and then just watch them die, and, I don't know, maybe. It isn't as bad as some other slashers I've seen. There's really only one character I would classify as obnoxious, the others I would classify as faceless, because I can't tell them apart. Yeah. The acting is really poor. I'm not sure how many of these kids have had acted before, but they can't. They can't really act, but the dialogue some of it is just bad, some of it has just not aged well at all. Wine ages well. Cheese sometimes ages well. Slang terms tend to not. I am an American original. And yeah, wow. Really not something you'd hear anyone say here. 31 years later. I don't know. I can't remember anyone ever using such a phrase even in the 90s, but whatever. The attempts at humor are quite pitiful. These are dumb teenagers who are dumb. I know, I, I said it once before, but it bears repeating now. So I don't expect them to be making up really, really clever punchlines and one-liners, but you can make a movie funny without the people in it being smart enough to tell good jokes. And this movie is not really funny much at all. It would be less noticeable if they didn't try so often. The pace is okay for a movie that's slightly under 90 minutes without credits and only slightly over width. It really doesn't move as fast as it should and easily could. You can tell that these people didn't completely know what they were doing, but they cared about it and that counts for something. The film does work. It genuinely is reasonable, reasonably effective as a slash flick. If you can look past the aging effects and slang, the really poor dialogue, the average at best technical aspects, then 
it'll do the job, you know. You might not remember it for all that long, but people who watched it back then probably, you know, do still remember a lot of it because it was one of the first of its kind. I don't know if this genre, subgenre, can really do great, but it has produced numerous films that, at least the first time you watch them, are fun, you know. And as such, this is a fine enough slasher flick. It's fun. You know, you enjoy it the first time you watch it. And I suppose that's all I can say without getting into any spoilers. So that was my spoiler review of Friday the 13th. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.